high scale, large volume, and we quickly learned that our bar designs were garbage. You know, it was impossible to execute what we wanted to execute uh, with what we had in place. So we're going to go through a lot of different equipment real quick, and we're going to go through sort of all the different options you have out there. Um, and then we're going to sort of tear apart all our friends' wonderful, beautiful, expensive equipment. But, so, you know, it's good to know where you're going to start. You need to know what, you got to ask yourself a lot of different questions. Exactly what do you want to execute? Do you want to have a classic style bar where you're building every drink a la carte? Do you want to sort of do less complex drinks? Do you want to do very complex drinks? Do you want to have batches and cheaters and shortcuts to execute all these drinks quickly? So you really need to ask yourself a lot of questions. Like how big do I want to be? How many people do I want to handle? How much volume do I want to do? What size? What type of place? You know we're not going to build a sushi bar and open a steakhouse, you know, which is what bar design has been in the past. So let's start with sort of what you need in your station. Everybody's familiar with the term cockpit, where you're you're taking one step to reach everything and you want to execute your whole menu that way. But you have to decide what is important. What do you want in that cockpit? Do you want to have chilled glassware? Do you want to have, you know, hand cut ice? How do you want to have this? You know, it's uh, you know, you gotta decide what uh, what luxuries you really do need and what you want to have and what your price point is on things. So uh, as far as equipment, um, the first thing you got to do is know all your assets. Go to every equipment company, every equipment store, go online, do all the research. That's the most important part, I think. You want to see what's available as far as like all your generic. A lot of these are American companies, but it's kind of the same wherever you are in the world. You have your four local companies that do sort of generic equipment, none of the customized stuff. Then you have your low-end Chinese stuff, your high-end Chinese stuff. Then you have your, then we'll get into like sort of um, like Perlink, you know, where they have the specialty lines, like the Tobin Ellis line. We'll talk about how some of those have gotten wrong. And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff from Alex and Salvatore, Tobin, my friend Troy, and they have a lot of lovely stuff, but there's also a lot of stuff I don't like about their stuff, and we'll get into that. Uh, the one thing you don't ever want to do is when the equipment guy comes in, he's like, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'll design your bar, no problem. See, like in New York, it's like some dude from Westchester, old guy, never bartended, walks in, and he's like, oh yeah, yeah let's, uh, let's do this. Basically what he wants to do is put a, a full line of his equipment behind your bar, which is what you don't want because he's going to choose all the wrong things, he's not going to give you enough sinks, he's not going to set you up for success, and it's, that's the last thing you want. Uh, always do your own design. You know, build out everything. Even if you don't know how to use CAD or any of the 3D programs, draw it on paper with a pencil. You know, whatever you have to do, design that whole thing any way you can. Uh, so like I was saying, like everybody sort of has, every one of these generic companies has a specialty line of equipment. A lot of them are terrible. This is an example of like Crown's answer to sort of the Tobin Ellis Furlick line. And I, I don't like anything about it. You know, you got your single speed rail. You know, the sink's okay, but like it's just, and it's really overpriced. You know, there's, there's, a lot of cheaper ways to get to the same sort of finished product. All right, sinks. Um, I, I love sinks. Sinks is my big thing. Sinks are the most important thing behind your bar. And you know, keep in mind like those first questions you ask yourself: What style of bartending are you doing? You know, um, are you sort of doing a you know dump rinse? turn it over for your shakers? Are you doing a lot of classic style? Are you having large format ice in your freezer already in the glass? So all you're doing is stirring a drink and then pouring it over that glass of ice? Or are you just constantly rotating through shaker sets? Now if you're constantly rotating through uh, shaker sets, 
got to have a lot of sinks. And you gotta, you're going to have a lot of liquid waste, ice waste, all the stuff. We're doing muddled fruits. You know, we have a ton of ingredients now. We have too many ingredients, if anything. But you can never have enough ingredients. But if you want to know what style you're doing, and I think, I think you want to be able to turn and burn. You know, and I think that's a big thing here. Is that a lot of places you walk in and you're waiting 25 minutes for a drink, you're just losing money. You know. Uh, Salvatore's sink is pretty cool. He's got like, you know, a big dump inside of there. It's like a big strainer. No one's Salvatore is probably a pasta strainer. But, you know, you want to be able to dump that stuff, turn over. I'm more of a two sink person. So I'll have a sink with water and an empty sink with some sort of strainer to catch all that mess and then to completely submerge the shakers. That's one thing I'm kind of big on that almost nobody does for some reason. A lot of us do it in New York. But like, I want to be able to submerge those shakers, wash the outside, the inside, and all in one move, put them right back on top of the bar, ready to rock again. A lot of people are like, you know, they're dumping, they're turning on the water, or they hit it on the sprayer, but you know, we have all these like creamy ingredients, these oil essences, like, and you know, we're double shaking, so the shakers get slippery and messy, and it's just, I, I find it to be a slower process if you only have one sink. So if you walk away from this, with nothing but this, get more sinks, you know. You can take, you can add one sink into your bar and sort of improve your daily life by so much and, your, and how productive you are. Um, all right, while we're here, so, so this is a Salvatore, he does it I believe with Cantilever, uh, which is a pretty cool company. They do a lot of cool custom stuff. They do. Those bars that break down into the large cases, that's pretty cool for events and things. As far as the station right here, um, you know, I love all these refrigerated drawers full of sodas and things like that. But where we're taking the industry now, he's a classic style guy, so this makes sense for him. You know, keep in mind, a lot of, a lot of the famous bar equipment is sort of like, you know, being customized to what they do, you know. And you've got to customize what you do or have something that has more of a uh, more of a crossover, you know, where you can do multiple things there. Now, he's got, you know, the, the juices in the plastic containers. I hate those things. I hope nobody here is still using them. Get rid of those things. Um, and then, like, speed wells, I love lots of speed wells. I want to be able to reach, you know, 50 bottles at least. You know, this is one single rail with a dozen bottles. That's not going to work for me. <coughs> um, Cocktail Stations is a cool company too. What they're doing is um, they're doing like you know with the angled sprayer and stuff like that. But you know, as cool as it is, again, it's one sink. You know what I mean? And it's just one sprayer. And I don't know how the sprayer trend sort of took off, but I think we need to sort of push away from it a little bit. I still like them for like mixing glasses and things like that, but it's, you know, and there's a lot of plumbing involved with it and it's cost and running more pipes around, so it's sort of a luxury you don't necessarily need. Alright, here's my favorite thing. We call it the Pat Stubber. Uh, we did this uh, out at, uh, we opened the Occidental out in Denver with Sean Canyon. And basically, we were just trying to squeeze stuff in, and we didn't have room for two sinks there. So we flipped them sideways, and we took the other sink, cut the legs six inches, sort of measured it to like a, like a seat height. So this I love. Dump in the lower run, rinse off on the other one, boom, right on top. It's like one move, you know. All right, so my friend Troy is designing the line right now. His equipment hasn't been made yet. Uh, this is a rendering I did of just his blueprints, and he basically took that to the next level, making it a piece of equipment. He added in a sprayer, he loves the sprayers. But again, dump, rinse, jump back in. You know, so this is like, this is almost a hybrid of like a salvatory type of deal with sort of our Pat Stumper twist. Alright, cheater bottles. All right, this is, a, this is a big conversation. So say like Death and Company in New York, you know, between the two stations, they'll have, uh, it's like 96, it's probably a little higher now, 
the 96 to 120 separate ingredients just for making content. Do you need 120 cheater bottles and ingredients to make great drinks and have a great bar? No, but it's also cool to have. So, I mean, the history behind this bar is that it's been run by many people over the years. And every person uh, sort of brings their own twist to the bar and their own cocktails. So over time, you know, once, you, once you're eight managers later, you have eight other menus that they're still executed behind the bar, which I, I respect that. You know, I think that's really cool, you know, to, to literally make, you know, 120 different drinks on a menu. But, you know, it's a lot also. But these are questions you want to ask yourself, like, from the beginning. How many do I want to actually execute? Um, so they opened, uh, they opened the Deathly Company in Denver. What they did with the cheater bottles was drop them in a slot right down the middle, and every bottle has a slot. And I thought that was a really good answer to cheater bottles. You know, then you look at like Dead Rabbit. They have 145 cheater bottles in between their stations, and that's that's a lot. That's a lot of ingredients. You know, I think you know, I think you know, you want to have us, you want to have cheater bottles. You want to go glass. I know a lot of Europe uses like the squirt bottles. Um, not big on the squirt bottle. I think you want to go to something larger, and there's a lot of different glass options. Oh, but again, you know, notice they got two sinks: dump, rinse, keep it going. Some of these questions you want to ask yourself is about the freezer. Am I doing frozen glassware? If you're doing it, there's a lot of different ways to do it. You can do custom stuff. You can do, you know, the reach in. You can have the, the swing door freezer. Um, there's, uh, you know, the CO2 fosters that are interesting. Technology is almost there. Um, I think they still need a little bit of time and improvement on that. And then uh, look at some of the off-brand companies. Like, there's a lot of off-brand companies that do strange sizes. Because a lot of it is like, you're sort of getting into uh, weird shapes. And then you're trying to squeeze stuff in at the end. So as opposed to sort of buttering up equipment and trying to shove it in there, you know, trying to find something uh, off-size that might fit. I like the freezer drawers a lot. I think those are interesting. I just think they're limited on space and they have a big footprint. Ice. Ice is an endless conversation, but what you want to do is sort of, you know, I think you should have your, you know, your cold draft uh, size cube. You know, Hoshizaki makes it out here. Uh, you've got to have that cube. I think you should have crushed ice also, no matter what. So at least those two ices. And then maybe some BFICs, you know, like uh, two by twos. It's a big freaking ice cream. Uh, so if you are going to go, I know you. Uh, almost every city has a sort of ice company where you can pretty much buy whatever size ice you want. Uh, pretty sure I saw a lot of it rolling around Greece this week. But if not, you're getting into the machines. And Climbell is the one that makes, you know, the 20 by 10 by 40, 300 pound block. And then you're, you know, you're picking it out with a cherry picker, slicing it up with chainsaws, bandsaws, whatever it might be. But there's a, they came out with another one that does 10 by 10 blocks, sort of like a 25 pound block, which I think is pretty interesting. It's a lot more manageable. You could probably fit it in the basement or somewhere else, and that's a good way to go. Uh, this is uh, with Jimmy Yeager out in Aspen, Colorado. He does, uh, he does a stamp. He stamps my name on it every 50 ice cubes. And if you get it, you get a free shot on the scalp. That's another conversation. All right, uh, custom. So custom is where I sort of lean on. Um, I'm starting to just buy sinks, ice bins, build custom dividers for them. This is sort of, I think, an easier way and uh, a cheaper way to sort of do exactly what you want. So if we're going to like the Tobin's uh, line, a lot of that stuff is very expensive. You know, with custom, you know, there's a lot of, like in the US, we have a lot of metal workers. You know, there's so many people that do custom stuff. And I'm assuming it's pretty similar in Europe. There's always a way to get something. But doing all custom drip trays, 
all custom stuff down here, you know, go custom as much as you can. I think that's really the best answer to a lot of ours. Um, you know, custom, you know, keep in mind when you do a lot of custom stuff, you almost become your own uh, general contractor, so you kind of manage a few people, if, you know, depending on what your relationship with this person is. So just keep an eye on, you know, what they're doing, where they're running pipes, and make sure they're keeping it neat, things like that. Oh, this is a cool piece. I built this piece for um, for a bar. We do sort of an insulated box, and just like you would have your speedwell horizontal down, this would go in vertically, and it would be insulated. You would fill ice on the bottom under like a big sort of six to eight inch drip tray, and then drop those bottles, and the whole well stays cold. So it's like a cold well. And then we could have almost like 16 to 18, 750 bottles for ingredients. Now, the reason I like this is because uh, the way I'm executing drinks is I'm doing everything in three steps. You know, I'm not making a 10 step cocktail. I'm doing my fresh lemon or lime, my mix of different syrups and house flavors and whatever that is, spirit. So one, two, three, you know, as most people are doing and should be doing. But like this is a cool piece you guys can have made, just slide it right in there and it's a whole nother well of cold ingredients right there in your pocket where you need it. Um, I think, and as I said, this is a good cheap answer to sort of, um, you know, everybody's custom stuff. You know, every almost everything on here can just be purchased sort of from one of the generic companies and then divide up your ice well, you know, do a custom drip tray. I like to go a little deeper, you know, just to have different options and then you even have the option of, you know, running some LED lights in there to sort of have it glow, sort of have that uh, stage set, you know, where you're making cocktails. So. But again, we're just throwing lots of speed rails, cold, cold well, uh, more speed rails on a glass froster, and that's, I mean, that's, that's like, you know, that's like seven feet of awesome right there, I think. You can squeeze a several of those stations in. But that is, that is a pretty simple option in going with a very little cockpit design. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of styles of bars. This is, uh, I think this is Dante in New York City. And, you know, depending on your program, you know, they do a lot of batch negronis and things like that, so they don't need as much space. And, you know, they have a pretty terrible bar design, but they execute very well because they've built their program around it. So these are all sort of factors in their overall look at what you're doing. So back to Troy's real quick. You know, He's got some interesting ideas. He's putting speed rails on an angle. Uh, I know, uh, I think Cocktail Stations has a version of that somewhere. Uh, he's got lots of draws and lots of draw space. Uh, the garnish, I don't like the garnish all the way over there. I like uh, what I did on this simple guy where you're having, you know, dip down in the wells, sort of garnish trays there, and we'll ice underneath those. Uh, I like to stay away from those sort of knife pans, you know, the kitchen, uh, the sort of kitchen garmage pan, uh, which you see, you know, on that left side. I think they're, you know, I don't know if that's my favorite thing to do, but there are some cool options with the refrigerated drawer equipment where you can slide a bunch of those out, like with Salvatore stuff. But I prefer to have a sort of larger jaw, like one cord, uh, you know, just more access to more stuff, or more quantity. Uh, so Troy's done a lot of interesting stuff. He, he took custom a little too far. This was like a $50,000 build out, but uh, he had, you know, built in induction plates. You know, this thing could handle anything a kitchen could. He had um, all sorts of dipper wells and different draws, and it was all one big piece of metal. And I mean, you can take custom to the extreme. You can go and put anything you want in there. I don't know if you need to do that. You know, you don't necessarily need the 125 cheaters. You don't necessarily need an induction burner in there. But 
there are options to do really fun things and be creative. Um, so, you know, another thing is, you know, when uh, sort of designing the bar and, you know, doing some of these 3D designs is that there's no surprises when you open. Like, you want to be able to open. I'll take all these same maps I made, sort of lay out uh, a booklet, and we'll decide where every bottle of liquor goes before we actually buy it. So we're literally labeling our speed wells before our liquor even arrives. And, you know, it just makes that sort of opening cleaner, you know what I mean? Because you want to be able to open and focus on the, on the bar as opposed to be running around carrying cases, trying to pack things into the closet or hide it somewhere or store it. So you really just want to stay organized. You want to know where every single spoon shaker, salt shaker, bottle, jigger, every single thing where it goes before you ever actually fill this bar. You know, and it's important to sort of, again, review every one of those assets and know, okay, I have a place for this, I have a plan for that. It's all about the sort of planning of these on plus. Um, the cocktail station's equipment is sort of growing on me. Um, they had, uh, we showed a slide earlier, they have some other stuff that's kind of uh, a little different from this and a little different size. Uh, the issue is that it's sort of a reach. You know, you want to be comfortable back there. You want to have a working station right in front of you. If you're reaching like this all the time, you're leaning up against wet equipment, you're getting dirty, you're hurting your back. You know, these are all super important things to decide uh, when you're designing. Um, you know, a station like this, this is an easy fix. You know, get a custom piece bought out without farther. Sorry guys, I'm a little nuts with the computers and we go, we take it a little too far with some things. But you know, it's, it's you know, the, the 3D design, I'm, I'm in love with it. Like, I, I don't like the surprises, I like building out all sorts of cool things. And then you can build it all out theoretically first this way and then put exactly what you want in there. I mean, we'll literally build it out on a computer, then move all the equipment ourselves into place, call a plumber, order the liquor, ready to rock. Cool. Yeah, this, this is not working anymore. Next one, we're Yeah, there we go. All right, so Alex Cortina, um, you know, we're, we're, he's sort of thinking out the box with this equipment design. And it's interesting, you know, I set it up a bunch of different ways digitally. I don't know if I'm in love with it, to be honest, but like there's a lot of cool options. One thing I don't like about it is that he has it set up where you're sort of a station behind a bar, so you're not there interacting with the customer, which is one thing I don't like. But the idea of having sort of interchangeable, customized parts where you can sort of set your station up differently, I think is a fucking great idea. I would like to see this, uh, Cut in half, larger hexagons, larger hexagons, maybe even some square shapes, and throw it right against the bar. You know what I mean? I think that would be a great way. And then you're getting into custom stuff, where you can sort of swap a, a cheater well or swap an ice container, so that it's almost like if you're a lefty, you can set it up for a lefty. If you're a righty, the other. 
but there's a lot of different cool ways you can sort of play around with this thought of a bar design, you know. But again, I would like to have it pressed up against the bar and have that interaction with the customer. Oh, commissary. So, uh, a lot more, you know, we got to think about the service bar in a few different ways. Commissaries, you'll see them a lot more so like hotels, cruise ships, casinos, things like that where you're setting up uh, a service to sort of service maybe multiple restaurants, multiple venues. As a lot of people expand uh, and their bars are successful, you see them opening second venues sort of within the same building, uh, within a market or wherever they are. And it's cool to have a service bar that can kind of execute to all of those. But then I'd like to see um, a couple bars doing now, but I'd like to see sort of the chef's table of bars where you're bringing guests in like just your good friends once in a while and they can come sit at the service bar and watch you sort of just execute things out of there. Um, this is a design from uh, Tony Avogadro. This, you know, he, he sent this to me and he's like, hey, uh, critique this, tear it apart. And, you know, it's got a lot of issues. Again, he didn't have enough sinks, but I'd like to see more of a, uh, sort of a square situation. There was a uh, bar in Chicago uh, that Tack Carducci did a long time ago. I think it might have been a tequila bar, where they sort of had a bar they called the Inside Out Bar, where the customer's standing behind the bar with you and you're working at the station, which is a terrible idea, by the way. The last place you want your customer is literally over your shoulder looking at everything you're doing. But the idea of doing that as a commissary, where you're facing another bartender, you have your station, he has his station, then you put a couple of, you know, four bar stools on this side and then have a service pick up on the other, and then you could have endless shared cheaters with the person in front of you, would be a great move for a commissary. But I'd love to see more stuff like that, and I'd love to see that chef's table come alive for, for bar tickets. Oh, okay, this is uh, this is not important. This is a bar in space I want to design, hopefully, one day, if we ever get that far. Where we're, it's a longer story. I'm thinking a zero, zero G sort of champagne room kind of deal, but, um, you know, it's, it's more so the point is, like, take it as far as you can, you know. Get creative with the custom stuff. And, you know, you can do anything. Can set it up anyway, uh, but you know, try to just stay away from you know that single sink move and not sort of having um, you know having your cheater bottles and just having different layouts. You know, try different ways. You know, but it's, it's, there's a lot of there's a lot of options out there, and I think you just got to get your plan down pat and just know what everybody's offering. You know, know all the different equipment, you know, know what you want to do. Shock, uh, yeah, it slides up. Any questions? Yeah, does anybody have any questions? Oh, yeah. Um, just from being in the club, um, so, so what inspired me to design bars was, you know, bar backing every day, these terrible setups, like when I first started in the business, and growing up, you know, trying all these new cocktail ideas in bars that weren't prepared for, just, these are the same bar designs from, you know, 70s and 80s, so we would, um, we would just want to turn and burn. You know, in some of these situations, and if you set it up right, you know, no matter what type of program you're doing, you should be able to execute it quickly. You know, whether it's a club, you know, you're going to have a certain amount of bottles in your well and a certain amount of options. You just got to make every single one of those options make sense and count. So that's why I like that style of sort of doing citrus mix spirit. You know, I always like the customer to see the spirit go in there, but. Um, 
all our crazy mixes. You know, more of our jobs are going to these on gloss. So we're, pre we're prepping this stuff, you know, days ahead of time, you know. Anybody has any other questions? This is more of a personal question. Which one so far is just, if you have to work in a bar uh, or a VA bar, I don't know, which one would be your favorite and which one would be the most important? Hold on, hold on. I can't hear you. Say again. Oh, I mean, if I said open now, which one would I want to work in? Which one I would want to work in? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, no offense to my friends here from New York, but the last place I kind of want to work is the Dead Rabbit. You know, you got 150 cheater bottles, endless cocktails. You know, they're they're so exact about certain things. That's, that's not the first place I want to work. I wouldn't mind working at like a, like, you know, I think about Julie Reiner Clover Club is, those are similar setups, that Company Clover Club. I like that style. I think that's sort of the easiest way of working behind a bar. And then I also love, uh, you know, I love sort of some of the simpler bars where you're just serving a maro or, Vermouths on tap and things like that. That's probably a dream where I want to work is just pouring vermouths for people. Yeah. 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 I, I, think, I think that seven foot station here is trying to show you how it was Yeah. I, I think that that setup is cheap, easy, and is is really Yeah, so this right here, you know. And it depends how far you want to take it. You know, I like to have a second pair of station and then have a dishwasher in between or something like that. But you know, it's tricky with the dishwasher because it's got uh, lots of steam and things like that. So sometimes you want to put it all the way at the end of a bar or by the service station. But like, I want to have my my dump, rinse all within reach, so that I can go right back up to the drip tray and then just maybe a custom drip tray down the bar and then. I think the cold well, we're, we're going to see more companies making this. They're sort of the one foot option they have now uh, from, uh, you know, Crown Perlet, Glass Dead, most of them do it. But um, I like this because it's narrow. Yeah, here's, the, uh, here's an example of one that's out there. But, you know, I think this is cooler because it's sort of a smaller footprint, you know what I mean? So you can have this at about 8 to 10 inches. You know, you can get rid of that, do a two-foot ice bin, you know, split it 60-40 with brushed ice, cold draft, you know, big, bigger cube, and then have your dump rinse, and then double rail the whole thing. You know, and then, again, these are decisions you want to talk about with glass frosting. You know, frozen glass is the greatest presentation, and I love it, but you really, you know, you've got to decide whether you want to make that commitment because you've got to have enough space to rotate them all through so that you're not, because if you're given a frozen glass at, you know, for the first drink and then not one for the second drink, you know, it's kind of unprofessional, you know, or it's just not consistent, you know. But I think, how wide is How deep? Two feet, you could do a two feet. Oh, depth? Oh, so this guy will be like eight inches. You know, you want your old bar top to be somewhere between 20 and 24 inches, I'd say. And when you want to have eight inches, you want to have at least 12 to 16 for the guests, though. You know? Yeah, one foot, one foot, do two feet, two feet. That's six feet. That's six feet, ten inches. You know, but then we got to talk about the trash can. But, you know, 
one thing people don't do enough is a custom trash can. You know, just build a metal box, skin it four inches, throw it right here. You know what I mean? Um, the only place I know that does that is Layenda in New York. Uh, one of Julie Reiner's bars. Um, they got a custom trash because that bar is like, I think, eight feet with two stations. So, you know, you're squeezing a lot of. But yeah, space, you know, and New York space dictates everything, you know. And I think just having that six and a half feet of awesome is better uh, than most of the, you know, $25,000 pieces of equipment out there. You know, no offense to my friends that make those, you know. Yeah, no, you, you don't want it to be too deep. And uh, I think, uh, you, know, you know, cocktail stations, you know, there's that school in Madrid, and they have that big setup, and everything in the world is in front of them, and they have all the little garnishes and pans and everything, but you reach it, you know, too far, you know, and that's uncomfortable, and it doesn't make sense to me. But, you know, you know, you don't, you know, you, you, we, we call that club head uh, in New York. Where you can head down and never see the house, you know. But again, if you're, you know, you've got to plan your knees out blocks, it might be three steps, like a three step trip, you know, so, so you're always in the customer's face, you're always looking, you're always seeing what everybody's doing, you know. What we'll do sometimes is we batch a lot of things and then just spend a little extra time on the garnish, because at that time we're also looking at something we've got, you know what I mean? You just gotta, you gotta budget every minute. You got to budget the minutes you're putting um, into the drink production. You know where do you want to spend more time? What do you want to spend more time doing? You, know, you want to have enough show so that people are looking at you, seeing the show, because that is interesting. It is fun to watch a the work and crowd different things and stuff like that. But you want to balance and have like you want to balance the recipe with how much time you're able to spend with that. You know that's why I don't like the uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Aviary in Chicago, because all the drinks are made in the back, you know, it's just like, well, it's not fun, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, ideally, the place for the glasses, instead of the, the ice uh, tray right there, what what would be the ideal place? Okay, for so this, you know, for frosting glasses, you got the you got the reach-ins, where you're reaching down and then you got to slide them under the thing. I, I hate that one. So instead of that, uh, I'll turn uh, there's, there's ones that have doors you could do, or then there's the freezer draws. And like, say you look at like uh, uh, the, in New York City, uh, Dutch kilts. What they would do is hand cut all their ice, place it in a glass, place the glass in the freezer draw. So they're just opening the freezer draw, put the glass up, pour it over. You know? And I thought that was a good move. You know, you're just you're pretty much dictating every drink you're going to do for the night, having a piece of ice sitting there waiting for it. And then you plan your piece of pasta accordingly. Maybe you have a freezer in the back, and the bar back comes out with, you know, trays of ice glass, you know, right into the frosting. You know, it, you know, you've got to, everything determines everything. So, like, the biggest issue I come across is, uh, uh, like, beer draft. You know what I mean? Like, somebody would be like, like this, you know, all the new buildings in New York are old and some are historic and it's, it's a nightmare. So they'll be like, hey, you know, we can't put the draft here right here. We got to slide it over before. And all of a sudden that changes. You know what I mean? Because it's like dominoes. Once you change one thing, you're moving everything around. So that's why I like having that digital plan set ahead of time. And, you know, it's a lot of dealing with construction workers, especially when you get into the custom stuff. And you do become almost a general contractor, sort of managing plumbers. Because they'll, you know, you want to manage those people too, because sometimes they'll just do uh, messy work.